No TV show is perfect, and sometimes even the best shows out there have one glaring flaw, which, while seemingly not apparent to the creatives, is blindingly obvious to fans who've been watching for years and years. Now, that flaw doesn't ruin anything, of course, but it is interesting when these series otherwise got everything right. I'm Josh from WhatCulture.com, and these are 10 great TV shows with one major flaw. Number 10, An Abrupt Time Jump, Parks and Recreation. Parks and Rec is a show that, for its first six seasons, just got better and better. As the writers found the characters' voices, established a whole town full of personalities, and ramped up the earned sentimentality, the show became so much more than the Office spin-off that it was initially conceived as being. And all that culminated in what could have been a brilliant series finale at the end of the sixth year. The season 6 two-parter was a joyous and cathartic high for the show, and while many fans would have accepted it as the actual end, there was no question about whether or not the writers could continue that momentum into a season 7. Unfortunately though, the pivot into this shortened season got things off to a shaky start. Jumping a couple years into the future, the 13 episode run saw character dynamics completely remixed, with new jobs and rivalries popping up overnight. Especially egregious was the falling out between Leslie and Ron, which dominated the first few episodes and seemed crowbarred in for the sake of drama. Combined with the off-putting and weird semi-sci-fi future that we were now playing in, everything, initially anyway, felt a little bit off about this season compared to the rest. While the writers would steer the ship to deliver a satisfying ending overall, so radically shaking up the final season for such a shortened run definitely feels like a misstep in hindsight. Number 9. It didn't end when Steve Carell left The Office. After a rough first season where it tried way too hard to imitate its Brit inspiration, the US version of The Office branched off to become its own distinct beast, in turn cementing itself as one of the most beloved and acclaimed sitcoms of the last 20 years. Yet when star Steve Carell announced that he was departing the show at the end of its seventh season, it seemed like the perfect time to wind things down. And though Carell's final episode, Goodbye Michael, received near universal acclaim with many feeling that it served as the perfect series finale for The Office, the show ultimately continued on for two more seasons. Even the most die-hard Office fan will surely agree that the quality sharply declined in the 8th and ninth seasons, as the writers struggled to fill the void left by the actor with a bevy of guest stars, while several main cast members became exaggerated caricatures of themselves. Looking at you, Andy. But hey, I want to know what you guys think down in the comments. Do you think anyone went toe-to-toe -to -toe with Steve Carell's Michael? And what do you think of these later seasons? I, I know a lot of people are fans, to be fair. Number 8. Too many characters, Stranger Things. Even if you're able to overlook the fact that Stranger Things' young cast members are noticeably aging out of step with the show's more compressed timeline, it's a simple fact that the sci-fi horror series has amassed an overstuffed roster of characters. At present, the show has over a dozen significant characters that it needs to give something to do. As resulted in season 4 portioning them off into a series of delineated subplots, which only further bloated out an already wildly distended season. It's clear now that the storytelling canvas simply can't support an ensemble cast of this size without the ongoing presence of some characters feeling a little bit forced. Enough so that even star Maya Hawke herself admitted that she felt the show has too many characters. In the very least, the Duffer Brothers have already confirmed that Season 5 will have shorter episodes than Season 4, hopefully meaning that the storytelling is at least a little bit more disciplined and concise this time around. Number 7. Olivia's Death, The Sopranos the Sopranos is a virtually flawless show, but the one misstep it made was understandably born out of a tragic situation. The storylines of the early seasons were defined by panic attack prone mob boss Tony Soprano and his manipulative overbearing mother Livia Soprano. With Tony's unresolved childhood trauma and unique relationship with his mother serving as the backbone of the show. Plans for the storyline were abruptly cut short however when actress Nancy Marchand passed away between seasons 2 and 3. Rather than write off the character between seasons or off screen, however, the filmmakers instead decided to use then state of the art TV technology to give Tony and Livia one final meeting before her in show death, editing the actress's face from previous takes and lines onto a body double and then stitching it all together. 
The end result is jarring to say the least, with the CGI being not the least bit convincing, while the script naturally is a little bit stilted and off. Even today, this would be a difficult tightrope to walk, but back in 2000, it was virtually impossible. Number 6. Running out of source material, Game of Thrones Back when Game of Thrones debuted in 2011, HBO likely felt confident that author George R. R. Martin would keep pace with the show and release the novel series' two concluding books, those being The Winds of Winter and A Dream of Spring, before the TV equivalent caught up to them. Yet things, of course, didn't pan out that way, and by the time the TV series was gearing to wrap up, Martin actually hadn't released either of the books, and to this very day, they're still both unreleased. Though Martin did give the show's creators a rough outline for the show's ending, it evidently wasn't nearly as concrete as an actually published novel would have been. All the same, according to Martin's camp, the showrunners decided to go increasingly off-plan in the show's final three seasons, where Martin was basically, as has been reported, quote, out of the loop. Without the source material, the showrunning duo came up with their own wildly polarizing conclusion to the mega-hit fantasy series, as effectively obliterated Game of Thrones' rewatch value for many fans. Number 5. Returning to Peckham, Only Fools and Horses only Fools and Horses is one of the most beloved British sitcoms, and honestly, it's kind of astonishing that it managed a near-perfect run across the couple of decades that it was on the air. And I say near-perfect because it did, unfortunately, make one major mistake right at the very end. For years, we had followed the hilarious exploits of Wheeler Dealers Del and Rodney on their quest, well, mostly Del Boy's quest, to become millionaires. And in what was intended to be the final episode, they managed to pull it off. It turned out that in between the junk they'd hoarded to sell over the years, you know, TV's deep freeze and David Bowie LPs, was a wristwatch that just happened to be worth millions. So in the excellent and emotional final episode, we saw the brothers literally walk off into the sunset with the promise that this time next year, they'd be billionaires. That ending only lasted five years though, when the show was revived and revealed that the brothers lost all of their money due to dodgy investments, and were back living in their old flat, facing a huge fine from the taxman that they didn't have the money to pay. The creators couldn't leave well enough alone, and while the subsequent couple of episodes weren't all bad, the new story wasn't worth overturning a perfect ending for. Number 4. The Monologues, Midnight Mass for my money, Midnight Mass is one of the best horror shows of the past 10 years. It's tale of a strange pasta arriving at a small island town. There is, of course, more to it, but on the off chance you haven't seen it, I don't want to even get close to spoiling some of these amazing reveals, hits all the right notes. It's bloody, filled with fascinating characters and last-minute twists, while boasting genuine frights along the way. Those characters are definitely the highlight, though, with the small-town vibe of giving rise to all sorts of conflicted personalities and morally grey individuals. The only issue is, on occasion anyway, Midnight Mass doesn't let them shut up. The biggest criticism of Mike Flanagan's show, something present in his other Netflix efforts as well, admittedly, was the lengthy monologues punctuating every episode. While not all bad, they did admittedly overstay their welcome, dragging the pacing of the series down while delivering characterization in an overly melodramatic way. They're not a deal breaker by any means, but when everything else is so tight, they do stick out like a sore thumb. Number 3. Not Enough Clickers, The Last of Us now, just to be clear before we start this one, this isn't a criticism that HBO's The Last of Us needed to be a balls-to-the-wall action fest that prioritized infected action above all else. The character drama was the reason most of the audience were tuned in in the first place, and the show delivered that in spades, especially in episode 3, which I am still not over. That said, one edge the game does have over the show is driving home just how oppressively dangerous this world is, and how every step is a constant fight for lead characters, Ellie and Joel. And initially, it looked as though the threat of the infected was going to be even more pronounced in the TV series, with unique story additions like the hive mind nature of the Horde and environmental triggers that could send them to your location. But sadly, these elements weren't really capitalized on in Season 1, and Joel and Ellie too often felt a little bit too safe, like the infected was only something they had to deal with now and again. 
Again, I'm not asking for a massive action set piece every episode, and it is a soul thing in practice, but the unforgiving and constant threat posed in the games makes those moments of respite hit that much harder. And it seems the showrunners at least somewhat agree, as it was confirmed in a recent interview with Variety that Season 2 will feature, quote, a lot more infected. Number 2. Too Many Deaths, Oz Across its six seasons, Oz was a provocative, no-nonsense drama that heavily invested audiences in its massive cast of colourful characters, both incarcerated in and working at Oswald State Correctional Facility. Back in 1997 especially, no TV shows were pushing the envelope in terms of violence and shocking content like Oz. But it also had a lot to say about the prison industrial complex and the role of prisoners in American society. It was confrontational, unsentimental, and brilliantly acted, paving the way for a bevy of dramatic series which proved beyond any doubt that TV could match or even exceed the quality of big screen storytelling. The problem, though, was that Oz eventually overdid it a little bit with its body count. While the first few seasons managed to keep the consistent slew of deaths shocking and edgy, by the time season 4-ish rolled around, audiences had become desensitised to the fast-growing pile of corpses. Death simply felt like part of life by the time Oz wrapped up its run, with more than 100 characters dying across its 56 episodes, to the point that it ended up feeling a little like a scandalous parody of itself by the end. It's still a terrific show, of course, which deserves a way more praise than it's ever received, albeit with the caveat that less might have been more on the death front. Number 1. The protagonist is the most boring character, The Expanse. The Expanse is one of the greatest sci-fi TV shows of all time, a watermark of world-building, deep-dish storytelling, astounding production values, and exceptional casting. There is, sadly, one weak link among the roster, though, and unfortunately, it just happens to be the show's protagonist, James Holden. Now, no disrespect to actor Stephen Strait here, who certainly gives a fine performance as this character, but he's just sadly unfortunately lumped with the least interesting member of the main cast by a country mile. Someone who's almost generic to the point of parody. Granted, Holden has had to deal with a lot of turmoil over the course of the show, but even so, his gruffness, lack of affect, and less compelling character development has made him fall down the ladder in his own show. So that's our list. I want to know what you guys think down in the comments below. What do you think about these flaws in these otherwise pretty spot on series? And are there any other examples you can think of? Let me know and while you're down there, if you could, please give us a like, share, subscribe, and head over to whatculture.com for more lists like this every single day. Even if you don't though, I've been Josh. Thanks so much for watching, and I'll see you soon.